up guys, this is Deacon with Sisu Strong. We're here at Ramp Sports in Park City, Utah. We're gonna head inside and talk to the CEO, Michael Kilkenstein, about all the awesome gear and upcoming events that they have going on here. All right guys, we're gonna take two. Uh, I didn't turn the mic on the first time, but we are here at Ramp Sports in Park City, Utah. We're with Sisu Strong, the Action Sports Performance Podcast. One of the biggest things you guys know that we're trying to do is bring you awesome information on gear, athlete sports side of things, but the gear side of things also, and just awesome information from guys that are doing it for the right reasons. Ramp Sports is based out of Park City. They have everything made here in-house. All of their gear is incredibly cool because of the artistic side of it, and they're just heavily involved in the whole lifestyle of action sports, which is what we love. So we are here with Michael Kilchenstein, the CEO of Ramp Sports, and he is going to break it down on where this evolved from and how it's gotten here and what they have going on. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. And um, welcome to Ramp. Um, this is we've had five seasons now uh, in existence, and um, one of the things that's interesting about Ramp is the name. Uh, it stands for Writers, Artists, Musicians Project. And uh, this name came from uh, one of our athletes, Ross Powers, who's a multiple gold medal uh, winner from the Olympics and the X Games, one of the greatest snowboarders ever. Yep. And we use Ross a lot in uh, all the product development and testing, and because uh, he's a great guy to work with. But and he knows a thing or two about snowboarding. He's been around it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But actually, he came up with a name because he had some other friends. There are musicians from prominent bands who have put their name on our website. If you go on rampsports.com, you'll see some pretty interesting characters on there. And it's a very loose collaboration between the, um, you know, the writers, the artists, the musicians. And, um, you know, really what it is, I think, is that uh, there's a lot of admiration back and forth between the music side and also the athlete side. Right. Well, and that seems you always see X Games and these guys, they're always plugged in, oh, yeah. finding whatever it is to help them get to that state of flow which is something you guys have always heard us talk about with Nate Hansen, our, our met, we have a mental performance coach on staff with us. And music is such a huge part of action sports. Oh yeah, and when you're, like I was at a dinner when we were really in the early stages of developing this and we had Ross there and I think Peekaboo Street and Donna Weinbrat, you know, all Olympic gold yeah. medalists. And then there were a bunch of musicians there and I couldn't tell who admired each other more. <laughs> it was like, oh, I mean, <laughs> they were both like starstruck. Everybody with each was other, which was uh, really cool because what they, I think, get is how hard it is and how much work it is to get that great at something like right. that. And so, you know, it's not like that uh, the musicians, they're not under contract or obliged to us at all, but there's been a number of them that have been willing to be on our website. And I think a lot of it is because they love, you know, action sports, ski mm -hmm. and snowboard and skateboard. But they, uh, I think, admire what we're doing from a best practices standpoint. Because there's a lot of great skis and snowboards in the market. And, um, you know, when we first started our company, we didn't have a factory yet or anything like that. We had some ideas. And, um, you know, in the beginning, we were an outsourcing company. So right. we did the engineering and the design work. And then we used a factory in Asia to do the production. And we did that our first couple of seasons. But it became apparent pretty quickly that if you're, first off, you're trying to use best practices, how do you control that at all when it's if built you don't, in Asia, yeah. no control. And even in Europe, not very much control. Right. And, you know, so if we wanted to really take charge of how we operated as a brand um, and a company, then that was important to us. Um, you know, so one of the reasons we started this company is that we felt like the consumer was really ready for something different. Um, you know, the ski industry has been more or less done the same way forever. Obviously, the products evolved. You know, there's been a lot of changes in the way things get done. But if you look at the, the whole infrastructure of how the product is brought to the market, it's still done the same way it was when Howard Head was doing right. it. And we felt like that, you know, the consumer, they want more interaction with the companies they buy from. You know, so we're a lot more, we wanted to be a much more accessible company to the consumer. Um, like when I used to work for Rosing all of those years, that they're a fantastic company, and they were as good as anybody or better in the industry at servicing ski shops. Mm -hmm. But if someone called us up and said, "Hey, um, what do I do about such and such?" There wasn't even anybody to talk to them. Right. We had to tell them, "Well, go see a store." 
And so, you know, I wanted us to be very accessible to consumers so that when they call us, they email us, they talk to us very easily, and uh, they like that interaction. And I also felt like, you know, the world's changed a lot, and there's a certain kind of person that wants to be able to buy online directly from us. Right. I, I still have total respect for the ski shops, and, you know, people sometimes interpret that as like, oh, well, I'm just trying to avoid them, and it isn't that at all. Um, you know, there's... I, I guesstimate there's probably a quarter of the people that'll never buy any way other than online. Right. Because it's the way they like to shop, so why pretend otherwise? I mean, well, that's like for us, where 95% of our business training, strength training and conditioning is online now because right. that's people are doing their own thing. They kind of have, they're on their own timeline, and, you know, yeah. sometimes that, can, for the most part, you can go online knowing what you want. Right. And so that's really cool. And just to speak to that, though, is accessibility. There's no way that I would have been able to walk into a big company like Rossignol or whatever and, and get one day response back from the CEO of the company. Like That would have been really hard to do to get this kind of interaction with one of those bigger organizations. So that this alone attests to, to their involvement and with what they're doing and they're proud to be a part of that, so that's... Yeah, I mean, we're all about the local community. We're involved in a lot of different things here, whether it's sponsoring bike races or fundraisers or you name it. And we're involved with Park City TV and KPCW and, you know, pretty much everything that goes on in this community we try to be involved mm -hmm. in. We do promotions with, like, Whole Foods and different things. It's, uh, and luckily, what a great place to be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> But then, you know, if you, if you look at the way people buy product, I think there's also probably a quarter of the people that'll never buy from anybody other than their favorite guy at Jams or Cole Sports or somewhere like that. Because they have total respect for those people and, you know, it's who they love to work with. Right. And I, I think there's probably half the people that are totally like, you know, if they run into us at a demo day, they might buy from us. If they wander in at Christmas time when they're here on vacation, they'll buy somewhere else. It's, yeah. But anyway, I think that the, the market was changing and at Ramp we wanted to be a part of um, what we saw coming as the way people wanted to access the equipment. And then we were also really motivated by the fact that, um, you know, it's, as a big company you have a lot of, uh, you know, you have a lot of horsepower financially and also you might even have a big engineering and R&D department, but things tend to take a long time. Right. And also... Um, you know, you might already have invested millions in tooling and things like that. So, you know, we came up with some new ideas here um, for the you know ways to manufacture skis that are totally different. And you know, we the skis are one of the only things still left that's like a modern product that's composite molding that still uses old presses. You know, where you have a camber plate and you have a mold and you layer everything in, you put it in a press, and under about four atmospheres of pressure everything gets squashed into that shape. And if you look at what we're doing here, we don't even have any presses here. You know, so a lot of ski companies would be like, what? Uh, that right? <laughs> it's like uh, part of the culture, I think, of the ski industry is using presses. Right. Because I think, and industries develop culture, and so it's hard for people to realize. But if you were in like aerospace, like if you were watching them make like a composite helicopter blade or something like that, you would see this all being done in a vacuum process. Okay. And so, you know, our engineer and I were talking about this and we were recognizing the fact that what was changing the most in skis was, um, and snowboards, was shape, you know? Right. And in the old way of doing it in a press, you'd have to say, okay, here's our new 100 millimeter ski and we believe this is gonna have a 21 meter radius and it's gonna have this kind of camber profile with the contact point about right here with that kind of, and once you commit to all that tooling and those molds can cost anywhere from $5,000 to $25,000 right. with the camera plate, the mold, and all this kind of stuff. And once you commit to that tooling, you're kind of stuck with that shape. Okay. And so the problem you get is when you're like trying to develop um, you know, the product for the future, you decide what you think the future is, and you commit to that tooling, but then all of a sudden next year, everybody wants this 100 millimeter ski to be 17 meter radius. And you gotta go do it all. And you're screwed. <laughs> And so when I was talking to Kristen, our engineer, what was important to us is to create a much more flexible process. And so what we did is we developed an a invention that we applied for a patent on and it was actually granted this last spring. It oh. took about two and a half, three years to get it approved. But we now have a patent on the ability to change the width 
the shape and the turn radius of a ski or snowboard without having to make a new mold with this invention that we have. That's the so That gives us incredible versatility, but also with a vacuum molding process, like in a press, the tooling is incredibly sensitive to how thick everything is. Mm -hmm. And if you decide you're going to use like 22 ounce triax and switch to 16 ounce triax or else double the thickness of the Kevlar, all these things will have an effect on your product. Whereas if you're using a vacuum bag, you're going to get perfectly even pressure tip to tail. No matter what. No matter it's what. More, it's it could be this thick or around. this thick and the pressure is the same. Got it. So cool. we've, in, we've invented and developed a really new way to make skis and snowboards and even skateboards. And um, we also had to invent some new graphic uh, you know, situations. Like if you look at snowboards over here, I'm not sure how wide angle we are right here. But um, if you look at the snowboards, you'll notice they don't have a plastic top. Um, on snowboards, you know, the top is a, a bamboo veneer instead of plastic. And the reason that we did it, almost everyone thinks we did it, is because they, they look beautiful that way, like they're hand painted. And they do look that way, I think. But the real reason is when we kept making snowboards with plastic tops like everybody does, they never come out flat. They always come out convex. Okay. Because when you mold skis and snowboards, you have a lot of heat you know, to cure the resin. And while everything's in the press or the oven, from the heat, all the materials inside are expanding. And then the resin hardens and everything shrinks. And on skis, that's how we actually get camber with this new process. Is everything expands, the, the resin hardens, and when it shrinks, we just get this perfect camber profile. On snowboards, what's the problem is not only does it shrink in this direction, but because they're so wide, they shrink in this direction. So what was flat when it was hot is now like this. So we would try to stone grind those, and all you get is the middle of 25% of the board, and that's completely normal in the snowboard industry. Everyone's used to riding the convex boards. And, but if you were like Ross Powers, and you were at the X Games or the Olympics, some guy got that flat. Of course, there's no base almost left in the middle, but somebody hand tuned it or ground it until it was flat so that somebody could ride at that level. But when we use a bamboo veneer, it's flat. So then we can stone grind it and finish it like you'd see on a okay. race ski. And so, anyway, I guess what I'm getting to is we had all these new ideas for technology and production, and we really wanted to be able to take charge of the materials we were using in skis and snowboards because when you're outsourcing, there's so much limitation, you know, as to what right. you can do. Because even the bigger companies have a lot of bandwidth issues with trying to do R&D for small customers, and even for themselves. Right. And so, you know, we had all these new ideas that we finally realized the only way we're ever going to be able to pull it off is if we had our own factory. So we talked to our uh, biggest investor and explained what we had in mind, and he agreed, and we did it. So the first year was complete madness because we were trying to, you know, get a whole new process created and get the process optimized. You know, right. we got to where it was funny. The first pair we ever made, we took to Mount Hood and it skied fantastic. But it took like five months before we could do that, uh, for, at least from an appearance standpoint, consistently. Like we could make skis that skied well, but it took a long time to get it to where they look like this. Right. Because you know, almost every ski we made at the beginning was what we would call a B, it was some kind of cosmetic defect. So we had to get that whole process, and it was a pressure cooker the whole year. We were back ordered from day one, and we were shipping, you know, months, two months late, just trying to keep, you know, because the factory couldn't go very fast yet. Right. So you know, we got through that season. We won medals in the magazine test with the new product, so we were psyched. So then the next year, we decided, all right, now we're going to do it with the snowboards. Same thing. Huge pressure cooker, back ordered the whole season, you know, trying to get this all dialed. I remember being at uh, A Basin with Ross Powers and other people doing snowboard tests, and this is like November 1st when we're finally like signing off on the final, and then we had to figure out how to make them the right yeah. way. So it was, again, a total pressure cooker. Right. This past year was the first year I would say ever that we could actually make enough product. So then, as if that wasn't enough, we decided to get a contract with uh, the NFL and Major League Baseball, which you can see this product over here. And then uh, that took our art person, Polly, and uh, created a situation where we had to do ski, snowboard, and skateboard graphics for all 32 NFL teams and all 30 Major League Baseball teams <laughs> and even some colleges. So um, quite challenging. And we know there's some diehard fans out there, so... <laughs> yeah. 
Especially yeah. with these two teams, oh, yeah. you guys take that pretty serious. Oh, so. yeah. Well, actually, the very first we sold on these, I think, was Green Bay Packers. Really? We had just gotten the deal, and I had gone up to a pro event at Deer Valley, and I ran into the guy that was the physical therapist on my knee, and uh, he was like, hey, I heard you just got a deal with the NFL. And I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, do you have Packers stuff? And I said, yes. And he's like, what time do you open tomorrow? So he was in the next morning right at 8.30 and bought four pairs and he asked if I could write a letter to each of the four individual people and, and you know, because it was pair number one, two, right. three, and four ever made. And uh, That's awesome. So are these all basically made to order, like yeah. with the top sheet? And is it any model? Yeah, or? we feature our most popular model on skis, the 90 millimeter ski, because it's what we sell the most of. And on snowboard, the tumbleweed snowboard, it's what we sell the most of. Okay. But we say right on our website, if you want like a powder ski with this graphic or some other snowboard with that graphic, we'll do any of them. And I don't know if you guys like getting a deal with the NFL is really hard. Like a few <laughs> years ago, there was some chick who was like trying to be like the NFL like spokesperson or whatever, and she had like a bunch of pictures of her on her website and was selling them, but she was in an NFL jersey. And she lost everything, got her butt sued off. So <laughs> they take that serious. So that's oh, yeah. it. We were that's just trying it. to do an ad. Cause that's we, a big uh, accomplishment. Well, just the paperwork of doing it is I can is only significant. imagine. <laughs> but anyway, the, this year at the Boston Ski Show, we, I've been talking to the guys who I've gotten to know at the NFL and uh, explained to them about the benefit of them becoming more interesting to the board sports community. And they agree. They, felt, they understand that that's an area where they could do better. And... Um, even though they're probably the most powerful brand almost on earth right. as far as a consumer brand. Yeah. But they could do better with that group. And uh, so they're going to actually be one of the sponsors of the Boston Ski Show. Ah. And um, uh -huh. you know we're going to have them there as uh, in a booth next to ours and do all kinds of cool interactive things and show like Super Bowl 50 film and awesome. past Super Bowl films. and. It's going to be fun, but I think that uh, we just tried, they just tried to do an ad and tried to get it approved by all the different parties, you know, for the Boston Globe. And the yeah. NFL was like, now nah, we can't do this ad because if the NFL shields there, we can't have that with other logos. And right. They're just, uh, you know, they are the thousand pound gorilla. They're fantastic. You can't say enough. Yeah, that's a but um, that's a pretty impressive endorsement. But they're uh, <laughs> very particular about how they're portrayed and how they're shown. We have to get these holograms made so that everybody knows that it's a genuine, a genuine NFL thing. Okay. piece of equipment. But um, and it, and Major League Baseball, same thing. It's um, they're uh, powerful. And that's wild. Yeah, that, it's, I uh, mean, I can't imagine the, it's the process cool. behind that. Yeah, it's really cool. So how many, you guys, again, one of the coolest things that I love here is the in-house and just the involvement and the, and the morphing that you guys have done with all these different communities. How many employees do you guys have in here making this happen? Uh, this summer we had, um, well, we have a person that does what I do, me. And then we have a accounting and admin person. We have a um, customer service um, communication athlete management person and then we have a factory manager and um, you know so that's uh, five people that are doing all and then we also have an art director that does all the graphics for everything you see here plus ads in the magazines and website graphics you know the art that's on the website all okay. that kind of stuff and then in addition um, we have uh, in the summertime I think we had nine factory workers okay. And uh, I think we might have even been at 11 at one point where we really had the hammer down. And then uh, two went back to school. And then we promoted someone from the factory to be the new uh, customer service communications person. And then we had to split off shipping from that person and add that to one of the factory people. So they're now doing that half of the time. But And then we have an engineer who lives in France. He also <laughs> used to work with me at my former company. So I, I think as an indie company, I'm pretty sure we're the only one that has a classically trained, you know, 13, 15 year experience, you know, designing Sorry. skis and snowboards with a degree in mechanical engineering and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. So I think it lets us, like, I think a lot of the indie brands are good at making uh, powder skis, especially. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it is uh, they imagine something they think is going to be great and they create it and try it. And then if it's not quite right, do another one. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of small companies doing good work there. 
But I think where we might be unique is the fact that we can even make something like a front side, you know, a race ski like that Jailbird, mm -hmm. and uh, be credible in every one of those kinds of shapes. Right, okay. What is, on average, from no shape to done, how long does that process take for a pair of skis? Well, when we first uh, did it here, it was taking more than 10 hours a pair from you know printing the graphics, cutting all the materials, molding, finishing, everything. Uh, now we're getting it down into the four hours a pair range. Okay. Because now we have it pretty well oiled here. Right. Like right now, things are running really smooth in here at this point. You know, Systems are a huge part of any business, and as a business owner, that's the one thing that I always struggled with starting out, and even now with the changes in our business, it's like, all right, what kind of system can we set up to make sure this flows as smooth as possible? So to cut oh, yeah. that kind of time off of it means that you guys have dialed it in. That's awesome. It's yeah, and, and I think it'll even improve a little bit more. Um, you know, if you look at the, we just actually bought some new equipment also. We just got two more base finishing machines. And in molding, um, we used to only be able to put two vacuum bags in the oven at a time. And now we can do five at a time. Okay. And um, the time that it's taking us to do that is being reduced drastically because we just came up with a whole new laser alignment system and it's actually reducing the amount of CNC time that we have to use to cut the parts and the fiberglass and Kevlar and carbon cutting time. Um, there's just improvement after improvement on the yeah. process so we just have to keep pushing and pushing to get that really always doing better. Cool. So you guys have a few events coming up in the next two weeks. Yeah. And uh, well, obviously one of the biggest things for us with these guys that give us time is to really help promote some of the, yeah. the cool things that, it, that you have going on. You wanna kind of give us a quick breakdown yeah. of what's coming up? Yeah, on October 10th, um, this is open to pros. So that would be the ski school, the ski patrol, the snowboard school, um, mountain employees that are like more full-time employees. And that's October 10th from four to eight. And at that, we're gonna have uh, free beer, food. Free well, beer, no. He, yeah. he, he knows Are that I'll be there now. <laughs> like everybody, usually I'm drinking during these, so <laughs> so this one was early in the afternoon. <laughs> Here we go. And you're a fitness guy, so I don't believe you. Uh, uh, no, he, we'll have to show him some podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> you work out in the morning. I get the workouts done at 5.30 in the morning so that I can be done in the afternoon. <laughs> there you go. Everybody's gotta have a plan. Yeah, you know. So then uh, October 10th, we're having that, and we're also gonna do a factory tour and show how we make skis, which is always really interesting for people. So anyway, if you're a ski school, ski patrol, any kind of a pro, love to have you come and join us. We also have a new deal with uh, National Ski Patrol where we're gonna have a specific graphic just for them. Oh, nice. And the base is even gonna be like caution tape so that you can use it to help close there a section of the trail on skis and snowboards. And then uh, we also have a special deal with PSIA and AASI for a special graphic for them too. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so uh, that's all gonna happen October 10th. But then October 17th is our really big party that we do every year. It's open to everybody. And it's the Bamboozle. And what that is is an art show. And um, at that we get three or four bands and probably 500 people. And it is really fun. And that's the following Saturday, October 17th from four to nine. And we even have a, a skier who's a good enough urban type rider that he could do the, a jump off of the Yeti out front. We'll make sure to get a picture, a video of what he's gonna be jumping off out front, guys. It's harrowing, I can tell you. <laughs> I, I'm pretty scared just watching him do it. <laughs> I've looked at it every day driving by and I'm like, I wonder if anybody ever actually hits it. Apparently, yes, they do. <laughs> yes, but he's the only guy who's ever done it. And we even had a girl here from the Canadian national team that was thinking of doing it one night when it was getting filmed. And she looked at it and she went, mm, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> like, forget it. <laughs> but we have this one guy who does. It's hard to keep him sober to the point when he does it, but then once he does it, then we let him go. Then it's on. Yeah. I don't know, for the, anybody that's watching this that hasn't grown up in the ski industry or worked in it, alcohol's a major part of it. <laughs> There's the reason we have that après ski time afterwards, you know, that's most, yeah. All you have to do is watch those <laughs> old ski movies from like the it, 50s. You go back the to the good ones and... And listen to those old ski records from right after <laughs> World War II, and you'll get it. <laughs> it's, and it's a great community, guys, and we love it. And this is one of the reasons that Travis and I 
knew that we had to move back into this industry and was just to have the chance to interact with, with people like Michael and, and the, these companies that 100% embrace this lifestyle that we love to be a part of. So. Yeah, and we love locals. Um, one of the big advantages is, you know, having a factory in your backyard is anytime we get a factory second, which I think every sample out here is a factory second, and we're very particular of what we call an A or B ski. So if it's just minor cosmetic blemish, like Slightly just farther say. left than right, then we sell these skis to locals at a really good price or snowboards. So if you're a local and you want to, um, you know, take advantage of that. It's, and that also, uh, again, just speaks to the quality that they're not going to put some, a product out online or whatever to anybody. They're gonna, they, do, they take it very seriously. Yeah, when we go doing, in ski so. shops, we see skis a lot that we would call a B. Yeah. Because we don't mind having some Bs because mostly they get used for our demo fleet, our athletes, for the people that work here. So even if it seems like it's not much of a B, we're okay with that. Because they don't get, they don't, they all get used. They get and if we have somewhere. some left, we <laughs> yeah. sell them. But um, we just sold a whole bunch of them on a Labor Day sale. But um, anyway, we keep getting the ratio of A versus B to improve, and we keep working toward making that better and better. Locals will be bummed if we ever get it to where it's all. <laughs> right, like, where do I go now? <laughs> like, I used to have to get a deal. What the hell? <laughs> but I don't think we'll ever get to where we don't have bees because it's impossible. You're always going to get something. Because sometimes you just get, like, you know, we use bamboo for our cores. Sometimes we get a core board. It's actually one of the bigger bees we get now where you can see, like, a little imperfection on the grain where the sidewall is, okay. which we couldn't tell until we were finished the ski, like, at the very end, that it was going to be there. So there's nothing wrong with it other than there's the appearance. Right. But anyway, it's all, it's all good. Cool. Well, guys, uh, we're going to make sure to tag all of the information that's coming up with these future events. Uh, Rampsports.com, some awesome stuff on there, all the musicians they're linked up with. And again, we always talk about the lifestyle and the community, and this company has fulfilled that and embraced that to the highest amount. And we were just psyched to have the opportunity to, to come and interact with them and be a local, like, local company that gets to be involved with their stuff that they're doing too. And uh, check them out. Be sure to hit them up with any questions um, about their products or whatever. Guys, it's football season. I know, I know some of you are really hardcore. I can see some of my friends probably buying it just to have on their wall. Oh yeah. And not <laughs> I keep thinking like, you know how you walk down Main Street in Old Park City and all the art galleries have that same picture of a bear eating a salmon yeah. <laughs> and it's probably like $2,000. I was like, what would be more cool, that or a pair of these pair hanging of on your shits. wall that's six seventy nine? Yeah, it's way see? less expensive. And it serves your that purpose. Is really cool in your man cave <laughs> or your woman cave. Yeah, we you know, we don't discriminate. <laughs> yes, but uh Come to the art show, it's really fun, and turn on the creative juices, because last year we had 127 pieces of art people made out of that's factory awesome. scrap. That's what, we, that's what we push, is take advantage of uh, any, uh, you know, get creative, make some kind of a piece of art, and try to do it as using factory scrap. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, Michael, thank yeah, you thanks. very much yeah, for letting us coming. come in, and yeah. uh, guys, again, October 10th. For all the guys that are skiing and snowboarding for a living in some fashions, ski patrol, snowboard instructors, riders, whatever, um, pro party here, come check out the factory. But then October 17th, the big kicking off winter celebration. Come over and check out all the bands, the ski jump, which we'll get a little footage of outside. But uh, be sure to look up rampsports.com and uh, tag them in some photos and some videos of you on their gear. Thanks a lot. Thank you.